Hello? Production systems are down. What? You're joking. Please tell me you have good news. There is a media event today. We need to recover the system ASAP. I checked the locks. The CPU is locked out at 100%. I think all the threads are stuck in some kind of infinite loop trying to process something. It, it doesn't make sense. Everything was running smoothly since the production deployment last week. I'm going to dig into the git commits and I'll update you again later. I resolved it. It was going into an infinite loop because it couldn't process a file type for one of the document upload processes. I'm deploying a hotfix now to production, but you definitely need to talk to QA tomorrow. Thank you so much. You're a lifesaver. Let me buy you Max for breakfast, and see you at morning stand-up later. At 9.30am in 2 hours time? No thanks. I'm going back to sleep. Buy me nuggets for lunch instead. I think it's clear that I work in software development and that means many many hours per day in front of a screen every day. In fact, I think at my peak, I was spending easily over 17 hours a day on a screen. If not on my monitor, then on my laptop screen, if not my laptop screen, then probably my phone or my tablet. Of course, not all of that screen time is attributed to work. I also spend a significant amount of time watching YouTube, Netflix, gaming, scrolling Instagram, TikTok, reading, just about any activity. Unfortunately, most of my hobbies continue to keep me in front of a screen, rather than like say hiking through a park or up a hill. The result of that is a lot of eye strain in the form of dry eyes, sometimes itchy, sometimes even blurred vision. Most of the time it's really just fatigue that makes you struggle a little bit to focus on things. I stopped wearing contact lenses about 5 years ago, opting instead to only wear glasses. And even for glasses, I have 3 pairs, 2 of which have blue light protection, that I generally wear whenever I'm working for long hours at home. And I've used many different eye drops on the market as well, and typically carry one with me everywhere I go. So when BenQ asked me if I would like to take a look at their new iCam monitor, specifically targeted at software developers as well, I was very intrigued. It is a 27 inch display with a 2560 by 1440 pixel screen resolution with a refresh rate of 75Hz. Inputs wise, it takes in DisplayPort, HDMI, and USB-C. With USB-C, it also does power delivery up to 65 watts sufficient for most mainstream laptops and MacBooks on the market. Once you have your laptop connected via USB-C, you can also make use of the two USB-A ports on the back, as well as the USB-C and USB-A ports on the front to connect even more accessories. You also get a headphone jack on the front, built-in speakers, and even a built-in noise cancelling mic. This is the audio recorded straight from the microphone from the BenQ monitor. And the quality is actually pretty decent, definitely good enough for any like uh, meetings or Zoom calls that you're having when you're working from home. All of that runs to your laptop via a single USB-C cable, making it a very convenient docking solution for your workspace. The base stand has a little notch, the perfect place to rest your phone when you're at your desk. You can also purchase optional accessory covers, such as this one that gives you more room to put stationery and cables, and this one that also allows you to display your LEGO pieces. Let's move on to the actual features of this display that sets it apart from regular monitors. There are several key color modes you can cycle through on this display. Standard, Movie, Game, M-Book, E-Paper, Care, and Coding. Movie and Game modes are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go into too much detail. In M-Book mode, Color is tweaked to better match the more consistent calibration found across most MacBook displays, which is pretty useful for Mac users, especially if you're working with photo editing or video editing. In coding mode, contrast is significantly increased, which helps reduce eye strain, 
particularly for developers who spend very long hours looking at code on the screen. A majority of developers make use of dark mode, which puts light-coloured text on a dark-coloured background, making it easier on the eyes when reading many lines of code without a glaringly bright background. This is particularly useful, especially when you're hunting for that one or two errors when you're scrolling through thousands and thousands of lines of code. In e-paper mode, the screen turns into a grayscale mode, similar to a Kindle. This mode is useful when reading or writing long documents that don't require color. Care mode is what I ended up using most for the past two weeks. It keeps the display a little dimmer and less saturated than the other modes. I found this to be the sweet spot I enjoyed the most where it wasn't noticeably affecting the colour of the content I was consuming, yet still providing a more comfortable experience for my eyes overall. Other than these main colour modes, there are a few other settings that you can toggle as well. First is BI, Brightness Intelligence. The simplest way to describe this would be toggling the automatic brightness option on your mobile phone. Through ambient light sensors, you let the device decide how bright the monitor needs to be. As the environment darkens, the display dims as well, and as the environment brightens, the display also brightens. This is useful as it means that throughout the day, you don't have to manually adjust the brightness on the display. I've left this on for the past two weeks as well. I enjoy the fact that I don't have to fiddle with the brightness levels throughout the day, basically trusting the monitor to decide what's best for me. Next is Low Blue Light Plus, which allows you to toggle it through a range of values from 0 to 5. I tend to leave this at 1 for most of the day, increasing it to 5 later than night when I'm nearer to sleeping hours, which, as the name suggests, basically lowers the amount of blue light emitted from the display and really helps to regulate that amount of blue light that gets into your eyes and helps with uh, reducing eye strain and eye fatigue. Then there's color weakness. This was a very interesting feature. I'm actually mildly colorblind. I struggle when dealing with certain shades of colors, especially when they're mixed together. The best way to explain this is through a colorblind test. Take this one for example. Basically, I can't read most of the numbers on this page, except the most distinct ones, like this 12. Everything else is pretty much a struggle. Like this one, I can't see anything at all, although I'm sure many of you see a number on this with just one glance. However, when I turn on color weakness, it boosts either red or green colors, allowing me to see this 45 a lot more clearly. So would I recommend this BenQ iCare monitor? After two weeks, I would have to say the answer is a definite yes. These days, work for me involves a lot more emails and slides and a lot less coding. But the one thing that has stayed mostly consistent is the number of hours I spend in front of a monitor every day. I paid more conscious attention to this over the last two weeks and basically taking out the time I spent driving or sleeping or when I was with other people, the rest of the time I was almost always on a screen scrolling my phone while eating, even in the bathroom, and gaming at night before bed. I was playing a lot of Hogwarts Legacy the past two weeks. My lifestyle and habits very likely did have some adverse effects on my eyes from over the many years. I went from using eye drops because my eyes were dry from wearing contact lenses, to using eye drops regularly even without the contact lenses just because my eyes felt too dry, even at their default state. There was also a bit of a scare last year, when the vision in my right eye became a bit blurry, but after a quick checkup with a specialist, it turned out to be nothing serious. But what the incident did prompt me though, was to start paying more attention to taking care of my vision. BenQ also has this Eye Care U software that allows you to control monitor settings without using the hardware buttons. It also includes a nifty timer to remind you to take breaks when you have spent too much time on the screen, as well as this light and distance reminder that reminds you to keep the ambient light at a healthy level and to also sit at a healthy distance away from the monitor. With the timer, I take more breaks now just to get up and stretch and to look out the window. One thing that helps is sometimes walking around during a Zoom call. In fact, I would say I take most of my calls now standing up and walking around the room rather than seated at the desk in front of the monitor. The distance reminder was also quite interesting. It made me realize that I was often leaning forward while at my desk working. This happened most often when I was working on documents with smaller font sizes or studying flowcharts and diagrams. What I try to do now is instead of leaning forward more, I would choose to zoom into my content more or increase the font size. I used to price super high resolution displays, opting to have more content and more text displayed on my screen at a smaller font size, 
But I never really considered how much that added to the eye fatigue and eye strain that I was suffering from. By putting eye care front and center through this monitor, BenQ not only attempts to help you reduce some of the negative effects of a screen, such as the low blue light, but it also encourages lifestyle changes, prompting you to build good habits surrounding how you use and interact with your screen. All in all, I'm rather satisfied with the features on this monitor. Some additions that I'd love to see would be a KVM function and a USB upstream port. That was the one thing that I found not as convenient for someone that switches between my MacBook and my PC on a daily basis. I was unable to utilize any of the USB ports or the built-in mic when using my PC via DisplayPort. Thankfully, my keyboard allowed switching between multiple devices over Bluetooth or wireless USB, so it wasn't an issue. But to be fair, the display is targeted at users with a work laptop that can be docked via a single USB-C cable, and in that regard, it performed very well. 27-inch 1440p is a great size, but I would also love to see this eye care technology applied to other screen sizes and formats as well, perhaps a 32-inch 4K display or a 34-inch or 38-inch ultrawide. BenQ also sent me their screen bar together with the monitor. To be honest, I used to see so many other workspaces using one of these light bars on top of the monitors, but I never understood why until I started using this one. Yet another thing that I can't turn back from anymore. It was never about needing to light up what's on your table, and it wasn't also about being able to work in a dark room with just this monitor light. What it really does is that it ensures adequate ambient light for your workspace, strategically placed in a location at, at an angle that reduces reflection and glare from the light against your monitor screen. Now when I sit at my desk without a monitor light, I feel like my quality of life at this workspace is reduced and it has definitely become an integral part of my setup. So back to the question, would I recommend the BenQ iCare monitor? I know BenQ was targeting developers with this iCare monitor, but I think that as long as you're someone who works for many long hours on your computer, you should definitely add this to your shortlist for consideration if you're hunting for a good productivity monitor. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.